The founder of the Virgin Atlantic Airline, Richard Branson, had formed the Virgin Galactic in 2004, and his goal for the spacecraft was to one day take paying customers on suborbital space trips aboard the company's one-of-a-kind rocket plane. Although the company is more than a decade behind its schedule, it has finally succeeded in completing a successful space flight in more than two years. The idea was to build a rocket ship with seats for eight people, which consisted of two pilots and six passengers, that would be carried by a mothership, released about 45,000 feet in the air, and then zoom just beyond the lower limit of space, and float around for a few seconds before returning back to Earth. After years of tragedy shaped by loss, which included an accident that claimed the lives of three workers, and a 2014 accident that left a test pilot dead, Virgin Galactic took some steps back in the new space race that it had once been favored to win. Richard Branson's Virgin Atlantic finally completed its first successful space flight in more than two years on Saturday, and its crewed VSS utility spacecraft carried to release an altitude of more than 44,000 feet before gliding back safely to Earth. On May 22, 2021, Virgin Galactic's VSS utility spacecraft completed the first ever human spaceflight. And it marked the first spacecraft from New Mexico, making it the third U.S. state to launch humans into space. There were three microgravity elements on board that day, and two of the experiments on board the vehicle were from NASA. One of the experiments was testing electromagnetic fields during the flight, and another one was analyzing the collection of dust on different machinery or optical sensors that could impact further development on human transportation to the moon and to Mars. The third and last experiment came from Cornell University and was looking at how exactly surgical fluids react to low battery environments. The insights gained from these experiments are going to try and help how we can store surgical fluids for long duration human missions to the moon and Mars. The Zia sun symbol of the New Mexican state flag is displayed on the outside of the ship. The Virgin VMS took off from Spaceport America in New Mexico at about 10.35 a.m. Eastern Time, with Unity on board. About 10 minutes before its release, Unity switched to its battery power and conducted flight control and electrical checks. The mothership EVE brings the spaceship to a high enough altitude and releases Unity. Once released by EVE, Unity's pilots CJ Struckawand and David McKay ignited the rocket's motor, then shut it down a few minutes later, with the spacecraft's momentum keeping it traveling towards its apogee, or highest point. EVE is the much larger aircraft compared to the mothership and Unity and was piloted by Kelly Latimer and Michael Masucci. Unity reached a speed of Mach 3 after it was released from EVE and reached the spacecraft at an altitude of 55.45 miles. It reached Apogee at about 11.30 a.m. Eastern and did a slow turn then glided back into Earth's atmosphere, landing at about 11.43 a.m. Eastern Time at the same Spaceport America runway where it began its flight. Rockets traditionally launch vertically from the ground but Virgin Galactic does it differently, as it employs an air launch system using a broadly winged mothership to carry its spacecraft aloft, a retro configuration inspired by the experimental rocket planes of the mid-20th century. Virgin Galactic CEO Michael Kolgazir told The Verge in a phone interview the day after Unity and EVE were back on the ground that the launch of the spaceship was, quote, picture perfect. He said that they were going to go through the data deeply and thoroughly. In a statement, Kolgazir called the flight a major step forward for both Virgin Galactic and human spacecraft in New Mexico, which had never hosted a crew testing mission to space. Dozens of employees gathered to watch the test flight under clear blue skies at Spaceport America, the company's headquarters, for future commercial missions. There had never been a more proud team of parents and engineers, Colgazier said, and champagne was popped to celebrate the craft's landing, and Branson, the company's billionaire founder, was electrified to see it all play out. As the spaceship broke through the atmosphere, Beth Moses, one of the astronauts on board, looked outside. A former NASA engineer who had led a team in charge of building the hardware that astronauts used on spacewalks. Saturday's flight, which also carried research payloads for NASA's Flight Opportunities Program, is the latest step towards Virgin Galactic's goal of a space tourism program. The company has some 600 reservations on tickets for future space flights, which are sold for around $250,000 each. Unity can carry up to six passengers and two pilots. This flight was Virgin Galactic's first space flight since 2009, and the third one to be completed successfully. Unity's first two flights in late 2018 and early 2019 were conducted at the company's test facility at the Mojave Air and Spaceport, California. Virgin Galactic later moved its operations to Spaceport America, where it plans to conduct all its commercial tourist flights. 
However, the company had to abort its first flight attempt at the new facility in December, after Unity's engines cut out early ahead of its glide back to Earth, due to what the company later said was electromagnetic interference. The electromagnetic interference-related issue on the VSS Unity spacecraft was stated to be resolved in less than nine weeks and that it would be ready for space flights by May. Three months after the initial target and fixes to that problem were traced to the upgraded flight control computers. The VSS Unity flight on Saturday featured some hardware upgrades installed since the December abort scenario, including a new digital controller that the pilots used for tighter handling. CEO Kolgazir said that this was the company's first run-in with Unity under full power, and he called it flawless. The controller is also expected to be used on Spaceships 3, the company's upgraded spacecraft tailored for routine production. Virgin Galactic said in February and confirmed during its May 10th earnings call that a total of four space flights were planned for this year, and the next one is slated to have two pilots and four Virgin Galactic employees as passengers and a third flight is even scheduled to have Virgin founder Richard Branson aboard. Flight 4 is intended to be a commercial flight for the Italian Air Force, which should generate $2 million in revenue. The company still aims to fly Branson this summer and resume ticket sales after doing so. Virgin Galactic also plans to fly two members of the Italian Air Force this fall in its first official revenue-producing flight. It is charging $500,000 for seats on that microgravity experience, and $600,000 for later research and training flights. It has not announced prices for its private space tourism flights, but has said that it will cost more than the prior $250,000 per seat estimate. Each company had its ambition and business models. Virgin Galactic's most striking distinction came down to its belief in the human mind. SpaceX and the Blue Origin were run by algorithm geniuses who saw the potential for computing power to eliminate human error and to one day render fallibility obsolete. Virgin Galactic's was more analog, fitting Mr. Branson's persona as an adventurer. Virgin Galactic's destination was space, although it remained an airplane company at heart. Its relatively simple spaceship was all cables and rods and took real skill to fly. What's next for Virgin Galactic? Earlier this year, the company announced VSS Imagine, which is the first spaceship three-class space planes, which is the first spaceship three-class space plans. VSS Imagine has a similar design to the previous space plane, but offers upgrades in production, visual aesthetic, and a unique design. Now, ultimately, the goal of the company is to reach 400 flights per year per spaceport. This means that any improvement in the maintenance, production, or design of the vehicle could greatly improve the rate at which they fly these planes. It would be interesting to see how exactly VSS Imagine would perform, as some of the first tests are supposed to take place during December of 2021. The company also reported a net loss of $129.7 million in the quarter, compared with a $377 million loss in the same period of 2020. Sales were zero, down from the $238 million in the first quarter last year. However, the recent achievements and introduction of the new VSS could be exactly what Virgin Galactic needs to make the company's return to space travel and exploration. How much would you pay for a suborbital flight on Virgin Galactic's space plane? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe.